Maybe you're sick. Maybe a family member died. Maybe you just got fired. Maybe your business failed. Maybe the love of your life just dumped you. You could be the most righteous, responsible person in the world and these things will still happen to you. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to deal with difficulties in life so that they don't destroy you but make you stronger instead. You've probably heard the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but that is clearly not always true. I mean, if you go talk to the alcoholic living on the street, right, who something bad in his life happened and he turned to alcoholism, well, did that make him stronger? Clearly not. Or the combat veteran that developed PTSD because of the difficulties that he had to go through. Did that make him stronger? Well, no. Both of these people are shadows of their former selves. Difficulties in life actually make people weaker in a lot of ways. Some go crazy. Some turn to alcohol and drugs. Some develop severe anxiety because they're so afraid that whatever difficulty they had is going to happen to them again. So whether or not the difficulties in your life make you stronger or make you weaker depends entirely on how you deal with them. And how you deal with your difficulties in life depends entirely on your beliefs. A great example of the right way to deal with difficulties in life comes from one of my favorite stories in the Bible, the story of Joseph. And if you're not familiar with the story of Joseph, Joseph is the youngest of many brothers and he is his father's favorite and his father doesn't try to hide that. His father lets all the brothers know that Joseph is his favorite and all the brothers are very jealous of him. And then one day Joseph's brothers conspire against him, throw him in a pit, leave him there for several days. They don't even really know what they're going to do with him. They just know that they're really jealous of him and then eventually they sell him as a slave to passing slave traders. The slave traders then take Joseph away to Egypt where he's sold to an Egyptian nobleman and he works in the nobleman's house and through his diligence, right, he is a very diligent worker and through his diligence he gains the favor of the master and becomes the head servant in the household. And so being the head servant in a household of a rich nobleman isn't really such a bad gig but then the, the nobleman's wife uh, tries to seduce Joseph and he rejects her and out of anger she accuses him of raping her so he gets thrown into prison. Well even in prison even though he was treated so unfairly he is diligent and he makes friends with the prison wardens and eventually becomes someone who works in the prison and he kind of rises his way up in the ranks from being a prisoner to eventually being recognized by the Pharaoh himself and being put second in command over all of Egypt. So that's the very abbreviated version. I probably got some of the details wrong here and there, but for the point of this video, uh, that's good enough. So I don't know exactly what's going on in your life, but chances are that getting thrown in a pit for three days and then sold into slavery by your own brothers is probably worse than whatever you have going on. You know, not to mention being accused of rape and thrown in jail. But Joseph had two things going for him. He had faith and he had humility. He sincerely believed that God was doing what was best for him, even though it felt like bad things at the time. And he had the humility to recognize that he could not see the big picture. He couldn't possibly have known what a big opportunity it was for him. If he had never been sold into slavery by his brothers, if he'd never been taken to Egypt by the slave traders, if he had never been accused of rape and put in prison, then probably he never would have met the Pharaoh and he never would have become second in command in the most powerful kingdom on earth at the time. So I don't know if you're trying to be a ruler of Egypt or trying to do something else, but if you want to do anything big in life, you need a solid basis of faith in order to be able to do it successfully. Because if you're doing anything big, you're almost definitely going to encounter a lot of setbacks. For example, if you're trying to start a business, ask any successful entrepreneur. They fail many, many more times than they succeed. Right? If you want to be successful in business, you have to be comfortable with the fact that you're going to fail a lot more than you're going to succeed. The people that we call successful are the people who are willing to fail and fail and fail and fail over and over and over again until they got a success that outweighed all the failures. During the 2012 election season, some news outlet wrote an article about Mitt Romney's business success and business failures. And, and the point was that Mitt Romney had failed a lot more than he succeeded. You know, if you don't know what he did, he was a guy who would buy distressed businesses like failing businesses and then he would reorganize them and then he would sell them to the market for for a much higher price and most of his projects failed and that was the point of the article that all oh, Mitt Romney wasn't so smart because most of his projects failed and at the time I thought that was compelling I was like oh well Mitt Romney isn't such a smart guy after all maybe he just got lucky because most of his projects failed and it was just a few that succeeded but the few that succeeded made him a massive fortune but Looking back on it now, I recognize that that's the way that it usually works. 
that the people who are successful are the ones who push through failure after failure after failure because the one big success will overshadow all the failures and make them a success in general. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me more. Leave a comment if you have some ideas and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get my future videos. So knowing that if you want to do anything big in life, you're going to get hit with failure over and over and over again. Which do you think is going to allow you to keep going, faith or doubt? How much more likely are you to be able to push through the failures if you know that there's a prize at the end of the road, right? If you don't have any faith, then there might be a prize at the end of the road, but there might not. How compelling is that? How much effort are you going to put in for a prize that might not exist? That's why it is absolutely crucial that you have a spiritual foundation. Trying to do anything big in life without that spiritual foundation is like trying to fire a cannon from a rowboat. You just don't have the stability that you need to be able to do it effectively. So when things that appear to be bad in the moment are happening to you, you need to recognize that they are happening for you. You need to have that faith and that humility to recognize that one, you don't know if a thing is good or bad, right? Because you don't know the effects it's gonna have in the future. You know that it feels bad in the moment, but that's all you know. And then you need to have that faith that some benevolent force out there is working all things together for your good. A great way to get into that mindset is just whenever anything that seems bad happens to you, ask yourself, in what possible ways could this benefit me? And you don't actually know any of this, right? This is all just speculation. But let's say, for example, that you don't get hired for the job that you've been interviewing for. And probably you're pretty bummed out, right? You think that that's a bad thing, but start thinking about all the ways that that could be of benefit for you. Maybe the job would have been miserable. Maybe the, the company would have closed down. That happened to me actually, right after I graduated from college. I had a, an, an interview with the job that I really wanted and I didn't get the job, but one month later, the company went bankrupt because they got caught in a Medicare fraud scheme. So maybe the job would have been terrible. Maybe there's a much better job waiting for you. Maybe that sort of work isn't the sort of work that you need to be doing to prepare yourself for a much greater purpose that you have in the future. Right? There are a million different ways that this bad thing could actually be good for you in the long run. Here's another example. Say you get sick. Well, what are you going to do if you're sick? Maybe you're going to sit home and read. Maybe you're going to scroll through YouTube, right? Maybe you're going to find some reading material or YouTube video that is going to completely change your life that you never would have found if you were working like normal. Or maybe you stay home from work and avoided an accident that would have killed you. Maybe your business failed. Well, maybe that was the wrong business. Maybe that door was closing because you would have wasted a whole lot of time and effort in a business that wasn't really fulfilling to you. Maybe now that leaves your time open so you can start another business that's gonna be much, much better. Sometimes you'll get confirmation of this later, right? Sometimes you'll recognize that, wow, I'm glad I didn't get that job because here this new opportunity is so much better. But sometimes you just have to take it on faith. Sometimes you never get that confirmation, at least not in this life. And even if you can't really think of any reasons that the bad thing that's happening to you might be for your benefit, well, there's always the possibility that it could be to build your patience. Right? Patience is one of the most profitable virtues you could ever have. Or it could be to help you recognize something that you've done wrong. Maybe somebody wrongs you in a way that makes you really angry. But then once you cool down, you recognize that you did the same thing to somebody else not so long ago. It's an opportunity to change. Or maybe you get pestered by a really annoying salesman and then you recognize that in your own sales efforts for your business, you've been using the same annoying tactics. Right? That's a godsend. It seems like an annoyance in the moment, but if you recognize that it's an annoyance, that it's a bad thing, that you should stop doing it, your life will be so much better because you had that live in-person demonstration. I believe that every bad thing that ever happens to you happens for your benefit because God is good. Maybe God allowed that bad thing to happen to you to teach you something or to make way for something better, or to give you an opportunity to overcome a weakness. Every bad thing, every challenge that happens, every, every obstacle in your pathway is an opportunity to get better. And this understanding comes from the knowledge that we as human beings are, at our core, spiritual beings. We are spirits temporarily inhabiting a physical body. If that were not the case, then life would be completely arbitrary and unfair, right? Some people are born into prosperity while others are born poor with physical deformities. Some people live long lives while others die in the womb or shortly after birth. 
You need to understand spirituality in order to understand why that is. For example, in the book, The Spirits Book by Alan Kardec, which is absolutely mind-blowing book. <laughs> if you ever want to take a look, I'll, I'll link to it in the description below. But anyway, he says that the, if a baby dies a week after birth, it was planned. It was planned as a trial for the parents. So the spirit of the baby had planned before birth to only live for a week. And when you have this spiritual view, you recognize that that baby is a spirit, right? Is a, a eternal spirit temporarily inhabiting a physical body. You recognize that, well, this isn't just a person who, whose consciousness was snuffed out after a week. No, this is an eternal being. So with that understanding, you recognize that there is a much bigger picture than just that one week plus nine months that that baby was alive. I'll probably talk more about that in future videos, but the point is that if you have that faith, if you sincerely believe that what happens to you happens for you, then you will have more perseverance, more certainty, and more power than you ever thought possible. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how your spirituality affects your success in life, I recommend you check out this video. And also, if what I said today resonates with you, please go ahead and share this as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. You guys have an awesome day. I'll see you later.